Hey folks, how you doing? Oh, Papa Joe here. We're on our eighth night of the Christmas challenge. I did wait on y'all. I was tempted to go ahead and read ahead, and I didn't do it. So, uh, chapter eight on the eighth day. If you would, join me in opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of your teaching. Lord, we're so grateful that you left down here your word on paper so that we could understand it, so that we would know what you wanted. Be with us tonight during this reading of the eighth chapter, Lord, and help each and every one of us to, to understand the meaning of the chapter and the words and, and what you wanted us to get out of it. These things we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all God's people said... All right, uh, the Christmas challenge, eighth night, chapter eight, the book of Luke. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and a village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, Mary Magdalene is what they actually call her, from whom seven demons had come out, Jonah, the wife of Cusa, and the manager of Herod's household, Susan, and many others. These women were helpers to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. I love his parables. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on. And the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seeds fell among the thorns which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sowed. When he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant, and he said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that through seeing they may not see, through hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fall among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures and they do not mature. But the seed on the good soul stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by preserving, produce a crop. Uh, what seed are you? No one, stands, uh, no one lights a lamp and hides it in a jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it out on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will, whoever has will be giving more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken away. Well, let me read 18 again there. 
Therefore, consider your carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. Well, there's a sermon in that all by itself. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brother are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, sailed he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. They sailed to the region of Genesis, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped to shore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not wore clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him and thrown him, though he was enchained hand and foot, and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demons into solitary places. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged him repeatedly not to order them into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of Grenesis asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out began begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him. Sorry. Uh, now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man, man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. But no one could heal her. 
She came up behind and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed. You go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. And that's the end of chapter 8. I hope you all are enjoying this as much as I am. I love my Bible. I love reading Jesus' story. And to do it this year at the time of Christmas and do this Christmas challenge, I thank the Heavenly Father for putting the challenge out there for me to find. I think it's quite awesome. If you would, please join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these teachings that you give us. Father, I ask that you help us to retain what we are learning, Lord, what we learned tonight, and to understand your parables. Lord, you're an awesome God, and, and you've taken care of us so well, and you've given us so much guidance. Lord, we love you for it. These things we pray in the precious name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And all God's people said, you know, I could back up and go over a lot of that chapter, but we're going to leave this as a reading of the Bible and, and not necessary lessons on each one. So thank you for joining me. God bless. And I hope you've been watching all the chapter, listening to all the chapters. Y'all remember, God loves you. So do I. Y'all have a blessed evening now. Bye.